Okay, by now you probably know congestion pricing is in effect officially. The goal here, according to the MTA, is to cut down on traffic in the heart of Manhattan. But how do we know if it's really working? That is the big question. News Force Checky Beckford met with one group already tracking the data. She joins us live in Midtown. Checky, just about 48 hours into this, so what have they found so far? We're all interested to know here. <laughs> Well, it is. Yeah, we're about an hour away, a little under an hour away from it being 48 hours fully. And yes, it is way too early to make to draw any conclusions about this. But I've got to tell you that uh, on a Monday after the holidays, when everybody is supposedly headed back to work uh, during the height of rush hour today, photojournalists Nelson John and I driving around the city noticed that it was pretty light. If there's one thing New York City is known for, it's traffic. But today, one day after the $9 congestion pricing toll on vehicles entering Manhattan below 61st Street took effect, the city, typically rife with bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on a Monday evening, seems, dare I say, empty? I'll be real honest with all of you. Is the traffic, it's down. It's down today. Congestion pricing or snow? I don't know. Governor Hochul seemed to be wondering the same, but the New York traffic sages, a.k.a. cabbies, aren't buying it. Generally. She don't think it's because of the congestion pricing. I don't think so. so. Every year is like that. Yesterday it says the rockets left, the traffic left. But two brothers who've created a tracker monitoring traffic patterns before and after congestion pricing say their early data is showing something different. What we're seeing is that for those routes within Manhattan, it does feel pretty seasonal so far. But Benjamin Moshes, a Brown University senior who created congestionpricingtracker.com with his brother Joshua, says routes entering Manhattan via tunnels are telling a different story. Traffic has significantly gone down. The site monitors 17 New York area routes and two control routes in Boston and Chicago. Looking at how long does it get take from point A to point B. And he says so far, we've seen a really big difference, even for you know those tunnels where a typical time is 10 minutes, we've seen times like four minutes and three minutes at the same times. And so that's a really big jump that we haven't seen in Boston and Chicago. Of course, the brothers will be the first to tell you it's early days yet, and they by no means expect anyone to draw any conclusions from one day plus of data. But their tracker is garnering a lot of interest. We've clearly seen that a lot of people are curious. So visits to the site have been huge. There's a lot of talk about it on Twitter, on social media. Can imagine so many people curious. Can't wait to find out uh, what the impact will be. Of course, and we reached out to the agency, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, uh, which would have the actual receipts, Easy Pass receipts, specifically of the number of cars that have gone through the tunnels so far, uh, and they are not sharing their data so far. On the Upper West Side, Checky Beckford, News Four, New York.